Hey everyone, this is Kelsey with Beyond Labs. I'm gonna do just a quick walkthrough of the organic lab benches, both synthesis and qualitative analysis for users who are coming in to use our organic uh, lab modules. The first thing that I will point out, right now I'm in the synthesis lab bench. There are a couple of things that are common to all of our lab benches and that I'm going to show you now here in the organic lab benches as well that are sort of our most important tools uh, for all users. The first one is the lab notebook here. Usually the lab notebook will be located on the stockroom counter as it is here and sometimes it will be located down here on the bench. When a user clicks on the lab notebook it will open up a separate window here where students can record observations and other standard lab notebook recordings, masses, things like that. And they can also save data that they record. So specifically in the organic labs, students can save spectra that they get from uh, doing NMR or IR or mass spec on a specific compound. They can save here in the lab notebook to look at later and then Using this file button here at the top, students can export their lab notebooks as PDFs, which they can then provide to their instructor through their LMS or however the instructor would like them to do it. So that's the first thing. Second is this little bell resting here on the stockroom counter. Clicking this bell will bring up the help menu for, in this case specifically, the Organic Synthesis Laboratory. The help menu can answer a number of your questions if you're having challenges interacting with one of the lab benches. For instructors specifically, the help menu also has assumptions that are made as well as other things that may not be uh, directly clear in the software as you're interacting with. For example, the solvent system that's being used for the TLC plates is discussed in here in, in specific. So when you first come across questions, this is a great resource to come to searching for uh, answers to those specific questions. You can see here on the side it has, we have these different sections covering different specific parts of the synthesis lab bench. And then down here, there's a whole nother menu for the qualitative analysis lab bench. The third thing that's common to all the lab benches is this little red bin here. If a user clicks directly on the opening of the little red bin, you can see as I'm hovering over it, it says clear lab. This will clear everything that is on the lab bench. So if a user perhaps makes a mistake during a reaction and makes the wrong product or experiences another one of the many other consequences that they can in Beyond Labs, they can clean everything up simply by clicking on this whole opening. If there are specific things from your lab bench that you would like to get rid of rather than the entire thing at once, those things can simply be clicked on and dragged to the opening of the red bin and dropped there. And then only those specific things that were brought over will be erased from the lab bench. The last thing that is common to all the lab benches is this little exit button. And this is just simply how you leave the lab bench to go back to the main menu like this and then you would come back in this way. Another principle that I want to share that can be helpful in coming into the lab for the first time, you'll notice that my cursor is the normal arrow right now. When I move my mouse through the lab bench it will occasionally turn into a hand. Anytime your mouse turns into a hand that means there is something in the lab that you can interact with. Some of these things will come up with little labels. You'll see here I'm hovering over the 10 minute button, which specifically means that I can advance the time 10 minutes by clicking on this button. This will come in handy as you do reactions. All of our reactions um, are built and patterned after real reactions and real kinetic data, and so some of them will be pretty slow. A way that you can bypass that in this virtual lab as opposed to a real lab is by advancing the time and allowing the reaction to proceed more quickly by doing that. So again, if you're moving around the lab, I won't cover everything today that you can interact with here because there are a number of things 
But as you are looking through the lab and rolling over and working through it, anything that turns into a little hand when you roll over it is something you can interact with. I'll also show you in a second that some of these things do not actually become available until you have taken certain steps. So for example, if I roll over this, it says stir button on the stir plate, but it's not a hand because I can't actually start it, and that's because I don't have a flask with any reactants in it already on the stir plate. When I do that step, then the software will allow me to click that because right now it's not going to do anything. So those are the four main things in the lab benches as well as just the general principle of rolling over something with your cursor and having it turn into a hand as something that you can interact with. I'm now going to just very briefly go through a short alcohol oxidation reaction so that I can show you a couple more of the things that you will likely be interacting with here in um, Beyond Labs' organic lab module. So you'll notice this blackboard over here. It has a number of starting materials. Your instructor will likely assign you a specific assignment that he or she has designed or that has been designed by Beyond Labs, in which case the correct starting materials will already be ready for you here on the stockroom shelf. I already have it set up for my alcohol oxidation. I'm going to use this phenyl ethanol. Reagents and other things can be added to flasks by clicking on and dragging. You'll see this brings up a syringe in this case until it locks in place over the flask. So I've now added my phenyl ethanol. And by rolling over the flask, I can see the contents. And so you can see the structure on the blackboard of the phenyl ethanol showing that it is indeed in the flask. Another way that you can add something from a container is simply by double clicking on it. And I'll demonstrate this with the solvent. So I'll add ether simply by double clicking on the bottle. Now I roll back over my flask. You can see that we have both our ether and our phenyl ethanol in our flask. Now I'm ready to bring my, my round bottom flask out here to the lab bench. I'll just simply drag it here. Again, as I showed with the syringe, when certain items are brought to a certain spot, they will click into place when they are supposed to, where they are supposed to go. And so in this case, you can see it's going to be going right here above the stir plate. So now again, I can see now as names, chemical, chemical names, what I have in my flask, both the ether and the phenyl ethanol. Now I have the option to start the reaction. I also have the option to begin interacting with these many reagents that are here. I'm going to add chromic acid to do the oxidation, so I'll double click on that. And then in this specific case, we'll add a heating mantle, which can be added by clicking and dragging, a condenser to prevent our solvent from evaporating. And then because we have a stopper on here on the top that we can't remove, we're going to add an inert gas line to allow pressure relief during the reaction so that we don't have any glass joints being popped apart or any explosions. Now I'll begin the reaction by clicking down here. As I mentioned before, you can, throughout the reaction, the blackboard will always be showing you what is contained within your reaction flask. You will likely have to do TLC during your reaction and do some reporting on that with RF values. I'm not going to specifically show a lot on that today. Maybe I'll do one TLC plate. So I'm going to begin my reaction. I'll click on it. You see it's begun to stir. As I mentioned before, this is going to occur in real time. So I'm going to advance the time a little bit to speed this up. So you can see my reaction has begun to create product. The acetophenone that is now listed on the blackboard in the back is our oxidized version of the phenyl ethanol. Let's continue the, to advance the time until we have taken up all of the reactants. So I advance the time one hour, and our reaction has now our chromous sulfate, our salt remaining from our chromic acid reagent, and our acetophenone, which is our desired oxidized product. Now, as I mentioned before, these the SEP funnel here, as well as the distillation apparatus, could not be selected previously. At this point, the separatory funnel can now be selected to do uh, an extraction of your products. And you can do this while this is still running a reaction, and that's what I'm going to do here. So I'll bring the separatory funnel over. 
it will put whatever was in my flask at the time into the step funnel. I'm now going to add an aqueous reagent to pull out our chromous sulfate salt. Let's add water. You can see now we have the two layers. We have a remaining aqueous layer down here, which if you roll over, shows you that it has the chromous sulfate and water. And then our upper layer here in this case is our ether and our acetophenone. We want to keep our organic layer in this case, so we'll click on it, bring it down here to this cork ring. We no longer need what is remaining here in the SEP funnel, so this can be discarded by dragging the SEP funnel to back to the lab rack here, or also to the discard bin here. In either case, it will replace it here and it will discard your aqueous layer. You will notice that the ether has disappeared from our organic layer. There is an assumed road of evaporation step that occurs anytime the organic layer is removed from the set funnel and put into a round bottom flask on a cork ring here on the lab bench. So now we have acetophenone, our product by itself remaining. And now I'm just going to briefly show you at this point, we can now take some spectra to analyze our product. Many of these can also be accessed during the reaction and at other points where you have mixtures and the spectra will reflect that. They will show um, all the peaks for the different reactants and products that you have contained in your flask or in your step funnel at that point in time. For simplicity, I'm just using the single final product. You can do an NMR simply by clicking on the magnet. An NMR tube will appear. You bring this NMR tube over to your flask and just drop it on top. And it will bring up the spectrum, the proton NMR spectrum in this case, of your specific product. The NMR can be easily be changed by hovering over the proton LED display here and clicking on it. You'll see it changes to C13 NMR, and then you simply do the same thing to collect a carbon NMR. The IR and the mass spec work similarly. IR will bring up a little salt plate that you'll bring over to your flask, and mass spec will bring a tiny mass spec vial over that you can get a mass spec from. As I mentioned before, these can be saved to your lab notebook simply by clicking save. And then they can be seen by reopening the lab notebook and clicking on these little links. And these windows can also be expanded. So that is just a brief overview of things that you can interact with here in the synthesis laboratory. I'm going to go very quickly over to the qualitative analysis bench. Many of the tools are the same there and work similarly to the way that they do here. You'll notice that the structure, though a little bit different, is fairly similar. We have a number of reagents. In this case, they are different from what we saw on the synthesis lab bench, as these are specific tests for functional groups, the qualitative analysis bench is specifically targeted at identifying and understanding how to identify specific functional groups. Similarly here, compounds within a certain functional group can be put out into the stockroom shelf simply by clicking here on them on the blackboard. And these <coughs> reagents can be added similarly to the round bottom flask, which can be then brought out onto the lab bench and tested with these different qualitative reagents and the same analysis tools that we saw in the synthesis lab bench to identify the functional groups. This lab bench also has the ability to do unknowns, which you may be assigned by your instructor. And in this case, the software will not tell you the structure or the name of the unknown, and you will have to go through and do these different analyses to identify the structure.